everyone. Yeah, welcome to the house of the Lord. Um, we trust that Lord God has been blessing you since you came. Um, he has blessed during the Sunday school. We had a wonderful time and wonderful contributions. And it's a prayer that the Lord will help us that we will brighten the corner where we are and shine for the Lord Jesus Christ by wearing the right garment, even the righteousness of the saints of God. Um, we want to appreciate God once more for being in our midst. This is Apostolic Faith Church. We are located at number 13, Penn Hill Road in Bexley. So for our internet audience, we're happy once more that you are part of the service this morning by joining us online. We believe that as God is blessing us here, he will equally bless you wherever you are located. Um, we will very much appreciate if whenever you are visiting, you take the time to come and worship with us as God will bless you. And, but again, if you cannot come, and we would like, love that you continue to just be part of our service from time to time so that you will be partaking of the manifold blessing of God here. We want to thank God for the choir. We had that um, organ prelude by Brother Mike, and then the choir sang Come and Dine, and we had that beautiful duet by Sister Kemi and Sister Faith. We will now join our voices together to sing, and our first song will be CGS 700, where we're going to praise God. Brother Mike Wolabi is going to be our songs leader. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the O God. We praise the O God for.
Kamo will take 671. 671. We take verses 1 and 2. 671, verses 1 and 2. After the introduction from the organist. <laughs> Keep our anchor home. Amen. Our song before prayer is going to be six, seven, three. Six, seven, three. I found a friend, oh, such a friend. We we'll take verses one and two, sitting down, and verse four, we we'll stand up to take it, and we we'll remain standing. Those who can stand to be led in prayer. Verses one, two, and three. One, two, sitting down. The fourth verse, we stand up to sing it and afterwards remain standing to be led in prayer after the tune.
life, friend. Our eternal God, we thank you. Amen. You have been the anchor of our soul. Yes. Thank you for the privilege to discover this word. Yes. Since we discovered it, we have no regret. Yes. Because the Bible has told us that accepting you, there is no repentance. Yes. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. Yes. This morning we have come to worship you. Yes. For you deserve our worship. Oh, yes. We adore you, O oh Lord. Yes. For you deserve our adoration. Yes. You are mighty in the high heavens. Yes. Those of us that were sick, Lord, you have raised us up. Amen. Those of you that have prayed, you have answered our Amen. prayers. Lord, those of you us that were agitating, you have come to, to be the soothing balm. For this, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Holy be to your name, Father. Amen. In a place where, oh Lord, there is dryness of the truth, you have brought us to the richness of your truth. Lord, for this, we thank you. Amen. Oh Lord, we have come now. Again today, to be refreshed by your word. As your servant will be coming up with the word. Oh Lord, let it minister into our souls. We have come to be blessed. Come and bless us, oh Lord. Before we arrived, you were already here. And you have carved out all the blessings for us this morning. Let us not miss any judge of it, Father. We rebuke the works of the devil. We rebuke his attack. Oh Lord, in any form or manner of shape, we stand shoulder to shoulder to destroy the works of the devil. For this reason, oh Lord, you were made manifest that you may destroy the works of the devil. Send your blood, oh Lord. Let your blood galvanize us and lubricate every pain. Oh Lord, soothe us today. Open our understanding. Open our eyes. Open our heart. Open our mind. Let us accept you as our true savior. For that is the solution to all our problems. Lord, we adore you. In the name of God the Father, we adore you. In the name of God the Son, we adore you. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Scripture reading is taken from St. Paul's Gospel to Timothy, the fourth chapter. We shall read from 7 to 16. First Timothy chapter 4, from 7. 7. 
but refused profane and old wives' fable, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Eight. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Yes. Having promise of the life that is it that now is and of that which is to come. Nine, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Ten, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Eleven, these things command and teach. Twelve, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Thirteen, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exaltation, to doctrine. 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying of the hands of the proprietary. 15. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that by profiting may appear to all. 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real, for I can feel Him deep within. My God is real, real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Some folk may doubt, some folk may scorn, all can go on and leave me alone. But as for me, I will take God's part, and God is real, for I can feel him in my heart. My God is real, is real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love of me is like your God. God is real, for I can feel it in my soul. I 
I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But since that day, yes, since that heart, God has been real, for I can feel his holy power. My God is real, is real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love of me, his life your God. My God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Amen. We'll open the scriptures this morning by going into part of what we read for the Bible reading, um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. This is a continuation um, of a letter written by Paul to a young minister, a young man, a wonderful man, who I can say was like Paul's son in the gospel. He was a father to Paul, as he was a father to Timothy. To Timothy. He actually saw to it that Timothy um, progressed in the right way. So he has this letter to write to this young man. So the continuation of the letter, I'm going from somewhere in verse 7. He's telling Timothy, but refuse profane and old wife's fables. There's a lot of things going around. But what he tells him to do is more important. He says, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. I'm going to repeat that. He, he, he's, he's instructing Timothy to do some exercise. The exercise he's telling Timothy to do here is exercise yourself rather unto godliness. Amen. So, in the short space ahead of us, we'll be considering the topic, God have mercy. Amen. Godliness through discipline. Amen. It's not easy to stand here. <laughs> um, this month is the Black History Month, and... I don't know why, um, I, I kind of know why they have to have a Black History Month because there's some blacks who don't know their history. And it's not a good thing to not know your history. You've got to know where you've come from. If you ask me where I've come from, I can tell you. I can tell you the house. So, I am from Oke Jebu, number five Oke Jebu Hill in Owa, Ondo State of western part of Nigeria. West Africa. God bless you, Brother Adi. I know where I'm from. I, I know my father. I know my grandfather. I wasn't able to meet my great-grandfather. But they took me to where I'm from. I know my roots. So, if they decide to take us all away from this country, some people will not know where to go. At least I know where to go. Amen. How things will be there, I can't say. But I know where I am from. Are you with me? But they had to bring black history in this part of the world because some people were brought over as, um, like, sorry to use the word, like, they, they just brought them over here in so many different ways. And one of them was by the Windrush. And this big ship 
from the West Indies and all that side of the world, and they brought them here, and they told them they're going to have a great life. Yeah. But you all know what London is like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can build castles in the air when you're thinking about London, but when you come here, the system is run on hard work yeah. and opportunities. Yeah. And it's the survival of the fittest. Yeah. And if you're not up for it, there's nothing for you in this place. Yeah. Every single money you earn, they will take it back. You've got to be disciplined, or you have no savings. But that's not what we're talking about today. The reason why I'm connecting this to the Black History Month is because we have some history in the apostolic faith. Um, one of the greatest men of God we have, who is an African, who served God faithfully um, as an overseer from December the 4th, 1983, when he took over from um, the great man of God who started the work in Nigeria, whose name is um, um, Timothy Badibo or Shokoya, this young man called Josiah Shoyinka took over from him on the 4th of December, 1983. And he held firm till September the 4th, 1999. He was a true man of God. Yeah. And it's good we know our history. Yeah. They, 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 we can't, we, some of us were under his ministry and some of us are here because this man of God stood. Yeah. And it is my prayer that you will stand, Amen. that Amen. other people will stand. Amen. The hallmark of his ministry, towards the end of his ministry, the very thing that, you know, catapulted him into glory was basically he believed based on the scriptures that to get to heaven you need to have a broken and contrite heart a broken and contrite heart it doesn't matter what level you're going to in the ministry you could be an overseer you could be a pastor you could be anything if you don't pass the test of brokenness, if you don't pass the test of being able to allow God to hit you at any point and that you can break down and say, I'm sorry, I blew it to my child. I'm sorry to the person that's working under me. I'm sorry. I had to do that to a young person um, just, just during the week, you know, messed up, spoke about her to someone else instead of going to her directly. And she got, a, she got to find about it. And, you know, it takes a while to build a relationship, you know. When you build a relationship for a while and all of a sudden someone sees that you've kind of like messed up, they're like, you know, Adibanji, what's wrong with you? What's happened to you? There's no need giving excuses. At that point, you just say, look, look, I blew it. Yeah. That's not what we were taught. That's not what I'm supposed to do. But I did it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I need to move on on this journey. I can't put, I can't park in that place. May we pass that test of brokenness. So it was one of the hallmarks of his ministry. When God was going to make him perfect to get to heaven. Before he got into where he would really have be on the highway to heaven, he made a slight detour. The Josiah we knew wasn't the Josiah that was being shown. Everyone, you know, listen guys, ev everyone will know when you are on the road because our lives are an epistle written and read before all men. If you start... <laughs> Just in the slightest form, you, 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 you just find out that some way you are not what you were before, people will pick it. People will pick it. It's like, something's not right. You know, because God has given us the spirit of discernment. Something's not right. And apparently, he made a little slight detour. Just a little one. Just a little one. Just a little one off the track. But you are either on the way or off the way. Yeah. There is no middle ground. No. There is no middle ground. And I think the danger is when we think we're... We, we, God said, I will spoo you out. You either hot, be all for me or not for me. All in or out. 
Don't try and camp a detour. Uh, I'm here today. Tomorrow I'm there. Like, like I can dance. This You dancing with your soul. You dancing with your soul. Go all in. Go all in. Give this road your best shot. And you will see what God will make of you. He made a detour. But God helped him to retrace. Immediately he retraced. This man of God went around every department. Every single department. Because he had built a ministry. And the devil was about to wreck that ministry. But God forbid. God forbid. That our work and our labor in Christ will go in vain. God forbid. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest the righteous put forth their hand into iniquity. As at that point, the rod of the wicked rested heavily on him. But Jesus decided to smash that rod. Because if Jesus didn't intervene, Ah, apostolic faith Nigeria would have scattered. Yes. Yes. You would not have apostolic faith. You, you Niger- Some of us would not have made it here. We would have gone in 10,000 directions. But because this ministry is based on the rock, yes. that rock cannot fail. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When, he, when he came back, he will go to where they're teaching people music. Yes. Stop. I'm sorry. This man of God at the age of 69 will prostrate. I am sorry. He will go to where the ushers are. Stop. I'm sorry. I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. You know what he was doing? Paving his way to heaven. Paving his way to heaven. Paving his way to heaven. heaven. You can go on YouTube. His final sermon. A broken and contrite heart. Last sermon he preached. Oh... He sang it with the children. The children didn't know they were seeing the last of that man of God. Because he was saying, far, far away in heaven. You know, I, I can't remember the song. But he was good. Away, away, far, away, far. Away, far away. Well, I don't want to go into the song now. It's not singing. and I'm not good in singing anyway. I'll just ruin it. But what we're talking about is he paved his way. And there was one tagline that he had, which finished the whole thing. He said, mission accomplished. accomplished. Now, I want to get to a place in my life where I can say, mission accomplished. Because the the man of God got to a place where he could say, I have done it all now. So let thy servant depart in peace. He was so bold. If you look, go watch the sermon. Just, you need to know your history. Just go and watch him. It was like he was, you see, because you know what? God is too precious to allow us to die in, in, in the, on this space of the earth. I don't think he, if he lived any longer, he might have missed it anyway. That was his right time. And so he, he, he faces the congregation. He says, now let that die. He, did he know? Did he know? Did he know? Come on. Listen, you can't start this journey without having God as your navigator. It will get to a point, the very things that are happening in your life, even though they are bad, you will be seeing good in them. It may not seem right to every other person, but God has put a sat nav inside you that will be telling you, my son, blessed are those foots of a righteous man for the end of those steps are peace. He said, let thy servant depart in peace. Just a couple of months after the camp meeting in August, on September the 4th, in Jos, J-O-S, Josiah Olabode Shoinka passed on to glory. May we make it! May you and me make the portals of glory. That was one of his hallmarks. We're not dealing with that today, but we want to pray that God will still give us the spirit of brokenness. We need it. We can be told off. We can be disciplined. We can be big people. Listen, this is one thing I don't understand. Like, how is it that you have the spirit of Christ? It doesn't matter how someone would correct you. You did something wrong. 
They talk to you harshly. The spirit of God within you is supposed to be able to pipe low, stop down, say I'm sorry. If you lack that basic spirit, something wrong with your salvation. Something's wrong. It's not godly. It has not. If you look, we all go on a rage when things don't work our way. It's that is childishness. Paul said, When I was a child, I spake as a child. Now I need to get, you know, <laughs> you understand me? Days are, look, there, there are times in your life, in the life of a, of a human being, you poo, your mommy will come, clean the nappy for you. You poo again, you clean the nappy. And don't worry, with time you go to the potty and then they start. You can't be pooing as an adult. No. No. You understand me? Nobody will, no, then they will start promising you, potty, no, 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 no. We need to mature. Yes. We need to big up. The, our life, we need to step up. Yes. This, this sermon is really, listen, why am I attaching Brother Shoinga to this? Because his second hallmark, apart from brokenness, was discipline. Yes. This sermon, I'm not preaching, I'm just, I, he, he's done the hard work. The man of God has done the research. This, this piece, godliness through discipline, was preached to, 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 to people who, like students who were about to go into university on the 10th of February, 1990. He preaches to them on godliness through discipline. I'm just going to take some snippets, mostly for our young people, that if you want to be godly, you've got to be disciplined. Yeah. There is no fast, loose, and fancy free. If you think you can just be fast, loose, and fancy free, you're going to make people despise your youth. Yeah. This is just the truth. They will despise your youth. That is why Paul was telling Timothy, exercise. Exercise is not easy. Those of us that have been struggling to lose weight, you will know it is not easy. Exercise is hard. And what Paul was telling Timothy is the only way to godliness is through a hard route. Yeah. If you think that godliness has become something so easy that there is no sacrifice that you have to put on in this way, you are on the wrong way. Okay. There must be something. Yeah. There has to be some part we're going to play. It's not all grace. No. It's not all grace. No. It's not all grace. No. There are parts we have to play. And Timothy was very careful. Paul was very careful to tell Timothy, look, exercise yourself. Put in, I call this, when I go to schools to do the motivational speaking, I say there's an F word all of you need to do to have a growth mindset. They start telling me faith. They start telling me this. I just confuse them. I say the F word is effort. And they go like, effort, effort. 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 You've got to put in some personal effort into yes. making your calling and election sure. Yes. If you can't do these basic disciplinary things on a day-to-day -day basis, you are going to have a shipwreck of a calling. You could have started on this journey I don't know when you got saved. God will put some cargo in you. He will give you a precious thing. I don't know wh how, whatever God is so faithful, he will give you that salvation. But can you just maintain it? I mean, is it wrong to maintain it? Like, for everything on the world, in the earth, God has given, he, I mean, God did the bigger part of this thing. He took his cross. He went to the cross. He was nailed to the cross. He took all of it for you. He did the big part. Now, all he's just asking you is that. Now, I've given you this salvation. Can you just also make some sacrifices for me? Is this too much? Now, less reason. Is this too much? Like, can you just forego some things for me? Can you just pay some prices? Let Paul said light afflictions. That's what he called it. He didn't, even, he didn't even feel worthy to call those things tribulations. He called them light afflictions. Because if you are truly heaven bound, this is where the problem is. If we are truly heaven bound, no price is too much. The problem is a lot of us have missed 
the way. And someone said that obstacles are what you see when you lose sight of your goals. You will just see things that don't work. You will just see things that don't click. You will just see everything that doesn't work and everything that will never work. And you will be so negative in your understanding and feeling that you can't ever make progress. But if you go to the bottom line of your problem, it is deeply rooted on laziness. Laziness is the one thing that God dealt seriously with me. Because in the past two years, I've been trying to write a book. And God said, I told you, young man, you are a professional procrastinator. Professional procrastinators don't finish things. And for you to finish this book, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind into a professional achiever. And to do this, young man, you must be disciplined. I said, whoa. It's going to cost me something. Yes, it will. For days, I won't come back from my studio. I'm writing, writing, writing. I'm not used to this. My body is aching. Ah, I'm supposed to be painting. No, write. I'm supposed to be drawing. Write. It's not comfortable now. Ah, write. The editor has a deadline, not a guideline. People like you, Adebanji, you think deadlines are guidelines. Think. Discipline. And you will get the result. Through pain, through tears, through fights, through fits, I submitted the final piece. If you go on Amazon now, you go and search on Google, it will say Adibanji Alade author. What am I trying to say here? If things as little as this, that will perish in this world, all the books of this earth will be burnt in fire. But if it's worth pursuing, and I have to put so much in, how much more my Christianity? It must cost me something. It has to. I have to feel something. I just, I just feel like going here today. I just feel like um, dressing this way today. I just feel like singing this song today. I just feel like um, talking this way today. I just feel like watching this thing today. I just feel like browsing on this site today. Feelings will not go with heaven. Hello? Someone needs to go and blow this on the mountaintop. Feeling-oriented Christianity leads to hell. You can't trust your feelings because emotions go like this. Emotions go like this. There has to be a point where what you do, everything you do, look, look at how it says, look at how it says it. Oh, I love this man called Paul. Look at what he writes in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. He says, let no man despise thy youth. Don't let anybody yap, 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 yap. Look at these young people again. Look at them. Today they say that. Say, tomorrow they say that. It no, no. Don't let people talk rubbish. You. you two don't do rubbish. You. If you don't want people to talk rubbish, don't do rubbish. It's simple. There's a price to pay. He says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example. Examples are not easy because people are watching, but there's a price to pay. Look at what it says. It says, be thou an example of believers. In what? In how you speak. <laughs> Brittle, discipline your tongue. Yeah. Not everything. <laughs> like I did. And then the girl said, ah, what's happening? Ah, sorry, you. The thing. <laughs> My head. Sorry. Let's come down to earth. When we miss it, we miss it. Yeah. If the tongue has gone around, yeah, 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 kill this one, yeah, 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 kill that one, go and repent. Restitute. Make your way right. So that in the end, that is not going to disbar you from the heavenlies. 
in word. It says in conversation. That conversation is not only con it's your whole behavior. Yes. The way you carry yourself. Your whole lifestyle. Everything about your life. Look, this is the problem. And let's draw it close. If you're appealing to your peers and they understand what you do and that's fine. Like, you know, I do my thing as a young person. The young people understand. They know what's in my heart. They understand me. Okay, what about the people who don't? There are some people who don't. And Paul is telling Timothy, be careful, young man. You're young. Don't let anyone despise your youth by the way you behave, by what you do. So despising will mean they will talk down not knowing. So you need to find a way to discipline yourself so that you balance the equation. It can't tie only down to youth, youth, youth. You have to tie it up because this young man, Timothy, was a pastor and he wasn't only leading young people, he was also leading elders too. Yeah. And to balance the two, he needed to make sure that he was in the middle of the road, making sure the old people don't despise him and he still needed to be on par with his young people. That is not an easy thing to do. But if it was hard, God would not require it of Timothy. That's right. Guys, we have to be careful. You know why? The devil will cast us passion on things we do, things we say, how we behave, how we comport ourselves, and it will bring our whole testimony crashing to the ground. But we have a ministry. We have a ministry to protect. We have a salvation to protect. It's going to cost me something. It will. You know why? We heard it last week. I'm just going to reiterate it. From the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, there was just something little that man needed to do. Don't eat the fruit of this place. You understand me? There's a covenant. Is that not an agreement? At least you do your part, I will do my part. That's where the whole thing starts from. There's always been a part for man to play. From the time memorial up till today, there's always a part. It's not all grace. If it, it, if, look, if it was all grace and we had nothing to do, God might as well ship, ship all of us to heaven. So there's nothing to do now. Just get saved, you, heaven. Saved, you, heaven. But there's work to do on earth. Yes. Yeah. Are you with me? There is work to do. And the work we have to do, we have to be discerning and savvy of our environment. We have to operate almost like a CID. We are sensitive, we are perceptive, and we can pick things in the environment. And when you are in a certain environment, you just know it's not all wrong, but it's also not all right. So you have a way of comporting yourself. You're in a situation, but you're wise. You're wise, guys. You're wise. You don't just let yourself off. You no, 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 no. At some points, you just know how to. Jesus Christ did it. He just slipped out of their midst. Mm. Yeah. They couldn't see anything in him. He's, they couldn't find anything in him. You know why they couldn't find anything in him? Because there was nothing of the devil in him. Yeah. He said it. Yeah. Nothing of him is in me. So you can't get anything. The problem why we fall is because there's something of the world in us. Like attracts like. Yes. So if the thing is doing boom, 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 and you don't have that, it won't be moved. But you don't stay there too. Because you have to be careful with your flesh. You have to be careful with your flesh. What you don't want to do, if you stay there too long, like Samson did, oh, it's my leg, oh, it's my chest, oh, it's my hair, where, where, where are you going? If I just slap your... Where are you going? Just give him, hey, you know, if you cut my hair. Uh, are you mad? You know, you, 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 are you losing it? Some of us lose it. We've forgotten that we have something precious. Are you with me? That needs to be protected and we can't be like everyone else. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person who has been called out of darkness where those people are into a marvelous light. And you want to compare the two with a, a, a gray area? No. Light and darkness don't meet. It can't work. You need to show them. 
Show them. Yes, sir. Amen. Let your light so shine yeah. that men, they will look at what you do and it will glorify Amen. your Amen. Father in heaven. Yes. But now the world is now showing you what to do. Do this. Yes. Delilah say, do this. Do this. If I do this, you do this. We have become like Moru. When we're supposed to stand tall. Like the children of those three Hebrew children. Whoa, I respect those boys. Whoa. The whole monarch, one of the strongest, most powerful men in the world, was about to annihilate them in the fire that had been put seven times hot. And these young boys. Ah! I look, may we be inspired by the right things. Had these boys. They started speaking to each other. Yes. Meshach, yes, Shadrach, yes, Abednego. We weren't taught all this. No, we don't do this. Yeah. this we're not made of that kind of caliber. Yeah. Look, King, we are not careful to answer you in yeah. this matter. Look, we're not even careful. Uh, listen, listen, oh King, they're still respectful. Uh, they haven't yeah. lost it. Be careful. Don't just talk nah, 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 to anybody, uh, yeah. to leaders, to respect. Look, still. Even when they were dealing with the, the, the monarch, oh, well, so, sorry, sorry, king, we are not disrespectful. You yeah. see this thing? Yeah. We are not. And Amen. but adventure, you throw us in, yeah. and our God does not deliver us, yeah. we will still not worship him. Yeah. Ah! The king's head went hot. Yeah. Because the world cannot contain that. Yeah. Hey! The man went in a rage. Yeah. Ah, see, go and throw them in. Even the men that threw them in, yeah. the fire finished them. Yeah. Then they threw these boys into the fire. If there's anything like moonwalk, the boys were moving on in fire. And the son of God, it was actually this hidden king that identified and said, Ah, did we not throw three people inside this place? But the fourth one is the similitude. It's like the son of God. God will be with you. But there's a price to pay. The boys pray the price. The boys pray the price. Look, even in this world, to get into the hall of fame, to get into the highest levels, there's a price you must pay. A basic self-denial, some sort of cost. Look at the athletes that have got to the highest level. Look at what they do. They can't eat anyhow. Look, they don't even rest anyhow. I was watching one on YouTube. He said he has this thing. He called it a mamba mentality. You know the black mamba. You just go out. You're all out. He plays a sport whereby he believes there's nothing that can stop him. What can stop you if you believe that too? If, if the human spirit, the ordinary human spirit can set their eyes on a goal, I am going to be the most valuable player and nothing will stop them. One day this guy lost. He lost a game. After losing the game, what, what does he do? You would think he would go to his room. He woke up the next morning and he basically dunk all day long. Hello? For 24 hours. No food, no sleep, no rest. All day long he was dunking, throwing. No air balls, everything going in, everything going in. For a whole 24 hours, just for a, an ordinary thing that will pass away. How much more heaven? How can you look? This is the positive part, because we need to. We need this. This was the hallmark. If you if you need this sermon, um, I can email it to anyone. I actually asked people on the alumni of ABS if they had this. Some people still had this. Thank God for Brashea Folari from uh, America. He sent the, the document to me. Look, what we're trying to say. This hallmark was of discipline was Brashuinka's belief. He believed, he, he didn't only believe in salvation, he believed that there is no instant godliness. Quick fix. Instant godliness. Do three steps, you are, you, 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 you are okay. Do five things and you are fine. No. Every single day, you must die. Yes. You look at yourself and you basically die. If there is no part of you that is dying, if there's no part of you that is dying, and where does it die? It has to die in things you love to do. The tendencies of the flesh that you know you were used to. You look, 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 look. We have a miracle in this human body. It is called habit. If I start doing one thing today for the next three weeks, it registers in my subconscious mind. 
it begins to register in my subconscious mind. My subconscious mind begins to believe that, hmm, Adebanji is now constantly doing this. Then if I spend another 21 days, that thing is becoming normal. Then I spend another 21 days, it's permanent. Yeah. That is how we learn to sin. Now we have to undo that because the tendencies will come back. So when you start off, you need to constantly say, I must, you will fight this flesh and die to it and say, look, let's go to Calvary every morning. Jesus, kill this thing in me. I want to serve you. I know I have the tendency to look at ladies. I know I have this. I know I have that. I deal with it every day. I am not anywhere close to anyone, but I die daily. I see, I will not touch you. I look, I will not touch you can roll it and shake it, but look, I look, God bless you, you were created in his image, I'm off. Bless you. Bless you. I hope my soul, like Pilgrim's Progress, the man said, heaven, no! I must make it. If you go play parley with this thing, brethren, this is where the problem is. You say you don't want to do, yet you are sitting there. The heat is warming you. The fire is warming you. you are, <laughs> hey! Hey! Pot cold water. Yeah, you wake up. You say, hey, that is wrong. That is not right. That is not right. Please, 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 please. There is power in habit. If I go to the grace every morning and say, I want to run this race. I'm praying for grace. Jesus, give me, give me, give me your spirit this morning. I must come again tomorrow. Because yesterday is not enough for tomorrow. It's not, every day you come back. Now, you don't base it on feeling. I don't feel like doing it today. It doesn't work with Christianity. Oh, I, 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 it's like I don't feel like... I, I, I. Feeling-oriented Christianity leads to hell. Yeah. You have to base it on what God wants you to do. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. Exercise thyself yeah. unto godliness. Please, please, young man, don't let them despise your, 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 your stand for God. Please, please, please. He warned him. You know, in the end, we will make it home. Amen. Yeah. When you, when you think back on last week's sermon and a sermon like this and many more sermons that are going to come, they are all to shape in us so that we are fit for heaven. Yeah. So finally, you know what I want to pray? This, you know, this, 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 this man of God, he said something. I'm going to read the last paragraph, but before I read that, he wanted to learn how to play the piano like Brother Godwin and Brother Mike. He wanted to learn how to play the organ. So he just went there. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. bang, 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 bang. Is that how to learn? Look at what those people that Brother Mike is teaching every Sunday. I see them going to the class. They look sad. I'm like, <laughs> they want to go to a class. Why are you not happy? Those who have done the work are happy. <laughs> those who have not paid the price. <laughs> Music class. <laughs> Let me tell you, there is a price. It's not all fun. If you want to get the results, there is a price to pay. Who said, whoever told you Christianity was not supposed to hurt is the biggest liar. Even Jesus Christ did not say that. He said, he that will follow me must take his cross. Take his cross, an instrument of death. Is that fun? That's not fun. So if you haven't identified with a cross, where is your crown? This is what Brother Shoenka says. Here then is your answer. Regularly read the scriptures. Prayerfully do as they say. According to schedule, regardless of how you feel. Remember that, oh, the last point perhaps points to the biggest problem of all. We give up. May you not give up. Yeah. We give up because we don't feel like doing something again. There is much that we don't feel like doing, but there are only two ways to live. They reflect two kinds of religion and two kinds of morality. One religion and life, sorry, one religion and life and morality says, I will live according to feeling. That one doesn't work. Oh. The other says, I will live as God says. Which way do you belong? Are you godly? If not, what are you going to do about it? There is only one possible way to become godly. You must be disciplined towards godliness. If you are truly sorry that you have ignored God and lived in your own ungodly way up till now, then turn to his son in faith in faith, confessing all your shortcomings, and be saved. He says, then you may join the rest of us. Ah, Brother Shrinker, oh! Bless this, God bless him. Because while he was saying this, 
He only had um, nine more years to live. He didn't know. We don't know how short or how long. So he said, then you will join the rest of us who by the grace of God, not our own strength, oh, yeah. uh -huh, by the grace of God, have uns the unspeakable privilege and peerless challenge to disciplining ourselves toward godliness, which is to say, toward Christ himself. Yeah. I am wishing you a brilliant success at the end of your academic year in your various institutions of higher learning. It was for students, but we are all students under grace. Yeah. Let's come forward, dedicate our lives to God, rededicate our lives to God, and discipline ourselves. We make the decision here, but we do the work over there, and God will help us. Jesus, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the way of the cross. It is the way of righteousness and of discipline. Lord, we have cast our vote for you. We have dedicated our lives unto you. We did not choose to be a Christian by mistake. Lord, we took a deliberate decision. We have decided our minds are made up. We will make it to heaven the grace to discipline ourselves Amen. on this way of righteousness, Amen. the grace to carry our cross and follow you. Lord, please pour it down today. Amen. Give every one of us, oh Lord, and keep us the more. Grant us more of the ability to walk the way you have walked. Give us more of the grace to focus on you as we go. Save today, oh Lord God, if there are people here that are yet to know this way of the cross. Lord, let this day be their day. Save them, oh Lord God. Let names be written in the book of life. Anyone and everyone that has looked back from this way of the cross, we're asking today, restore them back, oh Lord. And those that are on the way, Lord, please keep us going. Let us not look back, oh God. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.